Good evening. In compliance with Chapter 551 of the Open Meetings Act with the Texas Government Code, I call to order a meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Austin Independent School District for Monday, March 30th, 2020 at 6.07 p.m. Pursuant to federal, state, and local mandates and consistent with guidance from the Office of the Texas Attorney General in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is being conducted via video teleconference and is streaming live on AISD TV, Facebook Live, and Apple TV. It's also being broadcast on cable channel 22 through Spectrum Grande, Google Fiber TV, and on channel 99 through AT&T Uverse. Closed captioning in English is available on these platforms for the hearing impaired. And we appreciate the hard work of our AISD staff to help us adapt and we ask for your patience and support from our community as we continue our governance work as a board in service of our students, teachers, staff, and community. We will now move to the approval of the agenda. Secretary Ellens, do you have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Who was that, by the way? I'm sorry. Matthias. Trustee Matthias. Having a motion by Secretary Ellens and a second by Trustee uh, Jamie Matthias to approve the agenda, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. And then, Ann, I would ask for a verbal com confirmation since you're on the phone. Ann? So having a, a motion by Secretary Ellens and a second by Trustee Mathias uh, to approve the agenda, the motion passes by all those on the dais. Secretary Ellens, will you please uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the Pledge to the Texas flag? We've got, thank you. I pledge allegiance to, are y'all coming? <laughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States, States, of, America. United States of America. And, and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, 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 one nation, one nation, one nation under, God, under, God, under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. For all. For all. Honor the Texas, the Texas flag. flag. I pledge allegiance to, 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 to the Texas, Texas. One, state. One, one state under God, one, one and indivisible. And indivisible. <laughs> <laughs> I think we appreciate everyone's patience around uh, this new technology. Um, our first item on our agenda is under the superintendent's report, um, and the report is on the COVID-19 response. Dr. Cruz. Yes, thank you, President Rodriguez. Um, this time, just want to give an update uh, regarding the situation around COVID-19. And I want to start off with a really big thank you to all of our staff members in the Austin District uh, from before spring break through spring break and this past week. Uh, we had many folks pretty much for 24-7 to stand up many of the uh, opportunities that we opened this week. And um, with that, I want to thank uh, our staff for service and transportation and our police department uh, for their work and leadership to uh, stand on uh, places where uh, our students and families can come and actually get meals. We um, started off with around 12,000 a day. Uh, this past Friday, we were about 65,000 meals because we get meals for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And every day it's been increased more and more. The opportunities are there for our students and for our families. And I certainly want to thank um, you know, Chris, uh, Annalisa, and uh, you know, Chihuahua for the leadership and organizing all of our staff members who've done an amazing job. Also, I want to thank our folks with human resources, professional and then academics to stand up our learning and home platform. Uh, these are items that we had within our, within our organization 
but really lifting them up and have them available for our students and for our families. Those are on our website. It's learning at home. It has uh, activities and lessons from pre-K through seniors, through high school students. It's in a couple of languages and has the student expectations and it also has some activities that students can engage in. And so I certainly want to thank all folks for, uh, for their hard work in standing up and learning at home platform that system. Uh, this next week, uh, while you know our high schools are all on the one-to-one, -one, so our high school students did have uh, Chromebooks. This week we are, uh, some of our middle schools had middle school students Chromebooks issued by the district. We're going to uh, distribute more this week and uh, looking at how we can provide more accessibility and more hotspots throughout our city. We've been many, many different partnerships to accomplish that. We will thank our folks uh, to get that up and running. Um, uh, Kevin and uh, you know, Aaron has just been amazing, amazing work. Um, I also want to uh, let our community know that uh, we have uh, regular conversations every day with the city and the county leadership, uh, with leadership from the University of Texas at Austin and also with the Austin Community College so that we are aligning our decisions and we're focused on how to meet the uh, needs of our families and um, of all of our students or our entire community. But there's a connection there among our different groups. And um, I also meet on a regular basis with our students. Uh, uh, so try to make this uh, a little bit more for the connectivity. I do want to uh, let our community and the superintendents in the area also come together to align our schedules to make the best decisions for our students and for our families. Uh, this uh, couple of weeks, we then we needed time to stand up these systems and let things make sure that we have our opportunities in place. Um, but by April 6th, we want to have uh, more opportunities for, and many of our teachers have already and been engaging with their students, classrooms have principals. By April 6th, we want to have uh, greater opportunities for our students to engage in lessons and classes that we're, uh, that we're in, or that they are currently in. And that uh, is just a really big thank you and a big hug to the Austin community. There are so many individuals who really stepped up to the plate to help us in this time. I really want to thank the uh, Austin District, and also the different communities and different organizations throughout our entire community. Thank you so much for supporting our students and our homes. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Cruz. Uh, I think we were having a little bit of trouble hearing you, and um, I know folks are going to want uh, to read your your comments um, as well. So I just I really appreciate all the hard work that that you all have have done on behalf of our students. Um, I'm going to move to the uh, the president's report, and there are two items of the president's report that I want to. Uh, to talk about, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take them in in a different order. I'm gonna do the second one first, just because I think the 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 one on the COVID nineteen. I just want to make sure we have an opportunity for our, our board members to to say a few words. Um, under the president's report for the superintendent search, um, I wanted to make sure that the community knew that we. Um, we received responses to the RFP and we met uh, and we're meeting tonight in executive session to discuss the next steps. So I just wanted to make sure that we noted that for the public. Um, the first, the, the other item was gonna be the COVID-19 response. And I had a, a little bit of a comments and then I was gonna ask uh, my board colleagues if they wanted to say a few words. Um, first of all, Everyone listening out there, I just want you to know that your, that your actions are saving lives. Tonight, I'm speaking from my home, practicing social distancing, cleaning our surface, surfaces, and washing our hands for at least 20 seconds. What we know about COVID is that it has a transmission rate that's about two times higher than the flu and that those that are 65 and over are disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, and that we don't have a vaccine yet. 
On behalf of our Board of Trustees, I wanna thank Dr. Cruz and the ASD teacher, staff, and students who are managing the stress and changes brought about by this crisis. And a special thank you to all of those who are working in our schools today, practicing social distancing, washing hands, and serving our students both in their educational and food needs. I'd also like to say thank you to our IT department, um, Dr. Cruz, for making sure that you and that IT department um, are making sure that equity is at the forefront by ensuring that there are notebooks and Wi-Fi available for students. And I know you all are working really hard towards that. And finally, I just wanna share that I believe that we're called to a shared sacrifice during this time. And my hope is that in the end, our shared experience will make us more resilient. And we will look back and remember that all of us together, while the schools are closed, are saving lives, we're saving our grandparents and the most vulnerable in our community. And I wanna open it up and ask if there are any trustees that have um, any comments. And I see that on my uh, raising up hands that uh, Trustee Singh and Trustee Ellens are on here. So Trustee Singh, if you'd unmute yourself. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, I want to echo um, my gratitude to our staff um, and to our families for their patience and, and just everything they're doing during this tough time. Uh, my own uh, child has broken down a couple of times saying she wants to go back to school. And um, I think that's a huge testimony to the, um, the wonderful environment that you've created for our students um, in our schools and, um, and the wonderful experiences that I know you're working really hard on right now and planning. Um, this is just, it means the world um, to me as a parent and as a trustee knowing that there's so many people who are um, galvanizing to, to make sure our kids are um, continued learning and um, are socially and emotionally secure. Um, and I think it's an example of how tragedies and crises like this do bring out the best in people. Um, at the same time, I understand that fear and uncertainty um, and maybe even ignorance can sometimes bring out the worst in people. And I have been hearing incidents of, um, of anti uh, Chinese and anti-Asian harassment, even in, in Austin and um, around the country. And I just wanna take a quick moment to say um, that I know our district holds values really true to um, no place for hate. And, and, I, and, and I'm just really proud of all the work that we're doing in our district to make sure that that doesn't happen. But I do wanna just let the public know that there are people here to help if you're experiencing that type of harassment and um, the city of Austin and other organizations are collecting this kind of information. So if you, if you um, know anything about um, any sort of, um, anti-Asian or harassment that's happening, please report it to 311. And um, the last thing I wanna say on, on a more positive note is for our students, particularly for our graduating seniors, um, I'm so sorry that this is happening to you in your year. You have worked um, so hard over your whole career in school to make it to this year. And, and I know that um, you're missing out on a lot of special times. And I, I just feel terrible that you're going through this. And um, just know that um, we feel your pain. We feel your grief. And, um, you know, at the same time, um, I hope that somewhere in, in that hardship, um, you see, you see what what I and so many of, of my friends and colleagues see, which is that our, our students right now, especially our seniors, you're part of a generation of students who is um, who, just so ready to take on the world. You're so um, creative. Um, you're more woke and aware of <laughs> um, certainly uh, I was and when I was your age. And uh, I know that once we get through this, you're gonna come out of it stronger than ever. And, um, and I hope that um, you, know, you, you feel like you have a community to support you in your next steps. And we're still, we're very, very proud of you and all that you've accomplished and, um, and just look forward to seeing what happens next. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Singh. I had um, Trustee Amber Ellens next. Well, I think uh, Trustee Singh pretty much captured it all. Um, just also would like to just thank all of the teachers and staff 
of the district. I know Dr. Cruz was trying to thank you, but it was difficult to hear him. Uh, I can't imagine um, how the world is gonna know all of the work that you've been doing uh, behind the scenes. It's, it's pretty amazing how you've come together and you're figuring out whether it's food, whether it's curriculum and online learning. And it's, it's fascinating to just realize how appreciative we are um, for your service. And then also thank you to all the families. I just, the patience you are exhibiting is extraordinary. I can't um, begin to imagine what I would be going through with a senior in high school right now. I do have a senior in college who is actually experiencing very different grief stages, um, going through anger in ways that I don't, I haven't personally uh, dealt with, but now I'm trying to figure it out. Talk to some of our principals who are also trying to figure out every, every one of us is going through this, coming to different realizations about different aspects at different times in different ways. And um, it makes me incredibly, incredibly grateful that our teachers and our counselors and our, um, our caregivers, our bus drivers, our cafeteria workers are just rallying in the way they are. And I appreciate just everyone's patience through it. Um, but again, Trustee Singh, you captured so much of the, the positive work that's going on and we'll just keep, keep on moving as we can. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Ellens. I have Trustee uh, Wagner, then Trustee Tice, then Trustee Ashley next. So, Trustee Wagner. Hi, everyone. Um, I I think so many lovely things have already been said. Um, I don't want to delay us too much longer in getting before, moving forward with our meeting, but I do want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of our district employees um, who have worked tirelessly to put student learning and student um, emotional and mental health first in all of this. Um, and also making sure that we're taking care of our students, um, making sure bellies are fed, making sure that our students have access to be able to reach learning. All of those things are extraordinary lifts, even under the best of circumstances. And um, I am so profoundly grateful for all the work that's been done to get us there. Um, I also want to say to our families and especially to our students, thank you for being patient um, and waiting for the district to be ready for you to receive you in the best possible way. Um, I have every confidence that your teachers are going to do everything they can to make the rest of your year as wonderful as it possibly can be under the circumstances. And I know too, having a senior, um, my daughter is missing the end of her senior year and what a sad, sad time that is for all of our students who are finishing their last years and getting ready to matriculate, whether it's from elementary or middle or high school or even college, um, that it's challenging. And um, know that we're all, all in it with you. And I hope, um, and we'll work very hard to make sure that we find a way to celebrate those students and allow those students to have those last goodbyes and last bit of closure with their campuses. Um, it may not look like it has in the past, but um, I'm hopeful that we can do something in the future. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Trustee Wagner. We have uh, Trustee Teich next and then Trustee Ashy and then Trustee Matthias. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, not only is our AISD team, all of our team working hard to make sure that our kids and their families and our staff are well taken care of. Um, I know for a fact that the wider Austin Travis County community is concerned and watching. Um, I have notified many elected officials at the city level, at the county level and the state level about issues that our students are facing, particularly in our Title I schools. I'm very pleased to say, and also nonprofits, I'm pleased to say that we are getting assistance, primarily in our feeding at this point, um, because we are going to be needing more in our feeding. Um, our students need the meals in our Title I schools. Their families need meals. Our uh, family uh, resource centers, our food pantries are working hard. Um, volunteers are being deployed. Um, the wider community cares about AISD and its students and staff, and I'm really pleased to see that. 
Also want to remind people to accentuate the positive. Um, April is National Poetry Month. Let's get out there and write some poetry. Let's write some songs. Let's do some pictures. Let's do some videos. I saw a really uplifting video this morning from Mills Elementary. And I'd like to see more of those. And I've put them down. And we've got Tara Bordeaux, our uh, teacher extraordinaire at Lanier Navarro, who's already on it. And I'm hoping that we will see more of those videos. And I'm hoping some of those videos will get pushed out to our press so that the wider world can see that we are accentuating the positive. And you can learn a lot from doing a video. You can learn a lot from writing a poem, haiku, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. It takes a lot of brain power. So know that we are out there looking after you. We've got the wider ATX community looking after us. We've got the world looking in on us. And we need to make sure that we keep our spirits up, social emotional learning, mindfulness. We've got all those things going. And um, I am encouraged, not discouraged. And I really appreciate all the effort, appreciate all the efforts everybody's making um, at this point to keep the AISC team um, healthy, safe, um, connected, academically and socially and emotionally. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Tice. Trustee Ashy. Yes, and I would echo the sentiments of all of my uh, fellow trustees. I would like to also say, um, as a teacher myself, there's a reason why I uh, teach not my own children. So <laughs> for all of those who are parents who are dealing with uh, having their kids at home and trying to homeschool, I am uh, right there with you. Um, can't even count the number of times I've had to look at my 11 year old and say, would you speak to Miss Hughes that way? Um, but hopefully we will, uh, we'll continue to make some progress. Um, I also wanted to just say, you know, to Dr. Cruz, um, if I, I wanted to make sure that our staff and that the, the people that are teachers, our, our boots on the ground understand that, uh, I think it's whatever we need to be doing as a board to ensure that we are taking care of our staff, that we are taking care of their needs, that we are communicating well with them so that they know what they're doing and what uh, decisions and actions are being taken in order to uh, have them feel comfortable and know that they have some semblance of, of trying to know what's coming in front of them. I would, I would certainly appreciate that. And I wanna make sure that we are doing what you need, Dr. Cruz, as a board to make sure that we are not slowing any work that needs to happen in order to take care of our staff. So um, echo again the sentiments of thanks and patience to our teachers, to our parents, um, and to all of those that are, are experiencing what we all are, changing hourly. And uh, thank you uh, for your leadership, uh, President Rodriguez, and for your leadership, Dr. Cruz. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Trustee Mathias. Thank you, President Rodriguez. As a community, we are certainly in uncharted waters. Who of us could imagine, who, who of us could have imagined a few months ago that we would be operating as governmental op, uh, entities like this, looking like the Brady Bunch or the Hollywood Squares, and yet that is where we currently find ourselves. I just want to express uh, our gratitude as a board of trustees and as, as individual trustees to so many persons who have been on the front lines during these days, we know in our society there have been all sorts of first responders and healthcare workers and grocery store workers who've been helping to field so many needs, but here in our district to see administrators and teachers and staff members of all sorts, professional and classified, stepping up to assist in all sorts of ways, getting meals out to students, uh, meeting the needs of families. It warms my heart to see how AISD responds to adversities like this. A special shout out as well to our board of trustees, to the Hollywood Squares here on this screen for staying out of the way of administration and staff during these days. That is to say, as, as trustees, we want to rush in and ask, what can we do? And, and are we doing this and are we doing that? So for us to give them the space that they need to be able to operate in times like this, I know is valued by all of them. I've been speaking with the trustees from throughout Texas. I think I've had three conversations during the last week with friends from all over Texas. We're all trying to find ways as best we can to respond to the current events, making sure that employees are paid and students are fed and students are learning. Um, certainly throughout the state, we are finding issues with getting students technology and access to internet. 
Uh, I really appreciate all the efforts in this district to make sure that our students can continue learning, to make sure that they have the technology, the internet access, all that they need to continue learning during these times. This too shall pass. I'm an optimist. I cling to optimism. I, I know that when we emerge from this, as China is currently doing, that we will be stronger as a result of this. We'll be in a new era of education. We'll be more aware of, of the great uh, gifts that technology brings to us and to our world. Would also want to give a shout out since uh, Trustee Singh is sitting in front of a sign that talks about the census. As if all of this were not enough, we also have the U.S. Census that will be that, that we're in the middle of right now. So for all who are helping our families to respond to that, really appreciate y'all. It's a time of physical distancing, but not of social distancing. Let's continue to be close to one another in other virtual means as we continue to take precautions and be physically distant from one another. But to all who are helping our students and families through this. Y'all are real heroes. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Mathias. Um, I know Letitia Anderson will join us uh, later in the meeting. I know if she were here, she would echo, um, and, and I know uh, Trustee Anderson also would echo that uh, we appreciate all the comments from all the, the, the our board colleagues to our community during this time period. And, and once again, uh, Dr. Cruz, I wanna thank you and the administration for all the work you've done for our teachers and our students. And um, I think as you reminded me the other day that our organization is about 87% uh, personnel or human beings. We are definitely a human-centric organization. And, and right now, I really appreciate the fact that, uh, that we're taking care uh, of our folks, um, including our, our teachers, our staff, and our students. And I think just to echo what Trustee Ashi mentioned as well. Um, we're going to move on. By the way, I should just mention here, uh, we appreciate y'all's patience as the technology, uh, as we're learning this new technology. Um, we're going to move on to the public comment uh, part. And uh, I'm going to read a little comment here. Given the Given the natural limitations of the video conferencing format and in an effort to keep our meetings streamlined, we will not have general public comment on non-agenda items tonight. And I would just note that that is not required by law. And, in, and again, in order to streamline it, we're not having general public comment. As we become more accustomed to the necessities of quarantine living, our meeting processes, including this one, may evolve and change. And in the meantime, thank you for your understanding. Please also remember that there are additional ways to communicate with the Board of Trustees, with all members of the Board of Trustees, including emailing the board directly at trustees at austinisd.org. We will now move to the public testimony for items on the consent agenda and items for separate vote. As with everything else tonight, we'll be handling this portion of our meeting somewhat differently than usual. In order to accommodate our video conference format, members of the public wishing to participate in the public testimony portion of our meeting called a dedicated AISD phone line in advance of the meeting and audio recorded their remarks. We will now play those recordings. So I'd ask you to listen closely. And as I recall, and I might ask Dr. Reach, um, I think we have three recorded messages. Is that correct, Dr. Dr. Reach? That is correct. And yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Scott Thomas is going to assist us in playing them. Oh, great. Thank you. We're ready. Hi, this is Jared Brackenridge. I am calling tonight to, um, I guess, I was a little reluctant to speak to you all, um, but then I remembered a quote by MLK, and it said, our lives begin to end the day that we become silent about things that matter to us. And so I'm calling you because I was reluctant, like I said, to speak to you because of the restrictions that you've placed on us to speak to you. If you truly wanted to hear, and I continuously tell you this, if you truly want to continue to hear from the public, that is your opportunity to improve, to hear concerns. But if you continue to restrict it, you will not get that opportunity. Take it as an opportunity to, to improve. Um, but like I'm saying, basically, the whole policy on all of that is very concerning. 
Um, I think you're doing a very disservice to the students, the families, the faculty members, everyone, by limiting the amount of times you can speak per month, I mean, sorry, per three months, um, the amount of time that you can publicly speak. Um, it's very concerning, and I hope that you all please reconsider this. We went down from two minutes. My name is Dusty Harsman, and I'm speaking to the public consent agenda item 12.2. Thank you for the privilege of public participation at board meetings, as that is the topic of my speech this evening. Regarding the public participation policy on consent agenda item 12.2, I believe it will result in a chilling effect with only one minute available to each speaker. Houston offers two minutes, while Dallas, San Antonio, and Fort Worth all offer three minutes. Each of those districts also have policies to deal with overflowing public comment. Here in Austin, which prides itself on transparency and public process, we are likely going to discourage public participation as it's difficult to take time and trouble to venture to board meetings to stumble through the three or four sentences that one minute allows. Best wishes and thank you for your leadership during our adaptation to a post-COVID world. Hi, this is John Fitzpatrick. I'm a current parent of two students in AISD and a uh, former member of the board of trustees. And I'm my public comment is around 12.2, which is actually around public comment. And so I just wanted to express my appreciation to the board for their thoughtfulness about having the board meeting virtually, about providing this opportunity for public comment. And I know there have been a lot of pros and cons about how to restructure public comment and the legislation passed um, in the last session, you know, and the balance between shorter, more, and longer, less. And just wanted to express my appreciation for the board as volunteers with how hard they're working, um, especially during this time, you know, when we're all learning how to school our kids at home. And just appreciate y'all's leadership. Appreciate your hard work. Um, appreciate the time you're putting in to include the public. Appreciate the thoughtful ways you're thinking about the transition with Superintendent Cruz's um, transition out. So thanks for your hard work. Thanks for providing this opportunity for public comment. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, this concludes public testimony. Trustees, are there any question or questions or clarifications that you would like to uh, to make? Um, President Rodriguez? Yes. Um, maybe when we get to that item would be a time for us to address it, but maybe we might talk about that policy of uh, codifying the one minute for public comment. That is to say, it just seems that with the dearth of public comment that we had this evening and the light public comment that we had, it's certainly lighter than I think than any one of us anticipated how it is that certainly this trustee is, would be in favor of continuing with two minutes. I don't know how others feel about that. It certainly is a change from what is being proposed this evening, but certainly would be happy to entertain conversation on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, trustee Ellens, you had your hand raised? Nope. Okay. Any other questions or clarifications regarding the public testimony? And by the way, if you all might want to unmute yourselves, I can see some of you all, but not all of you all. Oh, there you go. I can see all, all of you all now. Um, anyone else have any questions or concerns? Okay, thank you. We will now, uh, thank you trustees. We now move to the consent agenda. Are there any consent items that trustees would like to pull for a separate vote? Trustee Cindy Anderson. Yes, I'd like to pull agenda item 9.2. That is the contracts for medical and pharmacy health benefits. And do we have a second? Oh, I'm sorry, I was, I, I was looking at my notes and not looking at you all. So, uh, Trustee Anderson has pulled item 9.2. Happy to second that. And Trustee Matthias has seconded it. Okay. Any other items? I'm happy to pull 12.2 for conversation, if not for a separate vote. 
Second. 0.2 with a second by Trustee Singh. Nope, that Katie? was Ashy. Oh, I'm sorry, Ashy. <laughs> Our chair of the policy committee. Uh, and then any any other items that trustees would like to pull from the consent? Okay. I'm just trying to clarify one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay, Secretary uh, Ellens, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So I move, I make a motion to approve consent agenda item 7.1 through 9.1, 9 9.3 through 12.1 and 12.3. Second. Who did the second? I'm sorry, I was... Trustee Tai. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry, I'm taking, I'm take, I'm writing things down and then forgetting to look up and see, see y'all. We're all getting um, adjusted to this. I, I think yeah. we're doing just fine. Trustees, are, is there any discussion on any of these consent items? So having a motion by Secretary Ellens and a, and a second by Trustee Teich to, prove, to approve consent agenda items 7.1 through 9.1, 9.3 through 12.1 and 12.3. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. And the motion passes by all those on the dais. So now we move to the consideration of the uh, items that were pulled from the consent agenda item. So do I have a motion to approve agenda item 9.2? So moved. That's Trustee Tai. Trustee Tai. And is there a second? I'll second. second. I'm sorry, I'm gonna trustee uh, Cindy Anderson. Yeah, give it to Cindy. <laughs> okay, so is there any discussion on item 9.2? And I think Cindy, uh, uh, trustee Anderson, you, you had uh, pulled the item, you wanna? Yes, I just wanted to make a, a small amendment to it. Um, this is a request for $80 million, but also a multi-year contract. And I, I understand especially in the situation that we're living in now, uh, the importance of locking into not just a single year with respect to employee benefits, but multi-year. My concern, however, is that um, it, this does not indicate that it will come back to the board once we know how much it's gonna cost for years two and three. Uh, typically, when we vote to approve multi-year contracts, they do not come back. And so I would simply ask that we add an amendment if it's uh, okay with the administration um, that just guarantees that in the out years, uh, years two and three, that the uh, approval does come back to the board for consideration. Dr. Cruz, any comments? Uh, let me ask uh, Ms. Cobb or Dr. Uh, we have our staff members while the First of all, is it um, so I, I don't know if Dr. Medina is on the call as well. Um, we can certainly bring it back, but if it, it does put the program at risk, if it's subject to the board disapproving the subsequent years of the contract, um, typically with our benefits program, it's difficult to make changes after it usually the first year is geared up to sort of administer the program. By the way, Nicole Conley, Chief of Business and Operations for Austin ISD. Sorry, I failed to um, failed to introduce myself. But so I think we can certainly bring the contract back for approval to the extent that it, um, you don't disapprove it. It would be really disruptive and difficult to implement um, annualized contract arrangements as associated with healthcare plans. It's just administratively difficult. Um, it's difficult for our employees to make those plan changes um, in between years. 
And so I just think the feasibility administratively would be difficult. We certainly can bring those contracts back. Um, and we do authorize the expenses in the budget every year when we build out the budget, there's the components for the benefits. Um, I just, there is some risk if it is subject to disapproval in subsequent years by trustees, it would be disruptive and difficult to administer the change um, after the first year. And that would be my only caution. So, Thank you. Fernando Medina, Chief Human Capital Officer. Yep. If I could just add to Nicole as well, I do want to just emphasize that the consistency of that contract. They, these are three-year contracts, but certainly we come back year uh, and uh, look at it on an annual basis. And we can certainly provide you an update on each year during the term of that contract if that would be beneficial. But also, I also wanted to say that the design of the of the plans. Uh, um, uh, you know, look different from year to year. I don't know if that was more of an interest or was it the entire dollar amount? I, I think honestly, it's just more concern about the fact that there's sort of no limitation. So, you know, let's just say for the sake of argument that year comes year two comes back, especially after COVID-19 at $150 million. Um, there's nothing that also sort of ties it into the limitations of our budget. And this is a conversation we're having sort of outside of, of our traditional budget process for something of this size and scope. And so it just makes me a little nervous, although I completely understand the uncertainty. I understand the need for locking in a multi-year um, contract because it does affect pricing. But at the same time, it's a little difficult to say, I'll approve it, whatever it is, not knowing whether it's going to be 10% higher, 20% higher, or 50% higher and also not knowing what the budget ramifications are at that time. Well, you you will approve the budget annually. So those health expenditures are built into the budget. So we always have those conversations when we talk about um, the compensation plan for both the salary raises. We always sort of talk about the benefits, PRS, all the pension costs. All of those decisions are tied to the annual budget. And our contract clauses, allow, everything is subject to availability of funding. And so, not, if we if the bottom falls out and we get zero funding, we we have out in our contracts that everything is sort of subject to the availability of funding. And every year you prove and authorize all the pension, all the health benefits that we sort of plan for the ensuing year. So it, really this contract is basically just giving us authorization to enter into agreements with these um, providers so that we can ramp up the programming. It, it, and, and you're right. Expenses are probably going to go up 10 to 15, 20 percent, and that's a compensation discussion that we usually typically have annually every year. And those expenses would be built into the budget. If you know every year we build in about five to six million for employee plan increases, we would we would present that as part of the expenditure of funds. And so you do authorize the spending every year. Trustee Anderson, I would also add that. Um, when we have seen increases or decreases in the total cost of, of, of our benefits, of, of medical benefits, what we do uh, to add, I'll just color in a little bit for, for, uh, um, for, for Nicole there, is that we actually adjust the rates and the premiums, the co-pays and such to account for any changes that occur in, in the expenses. And so I think what you might be more interested in is what it, how are we uh, adjusting to be able to, to um, account for the increases in, in, in either pharmacy or even medical. So for example, over the last four to five, I mean, over the last year to two years, we've been at about a four to 5% increase where typically you might see anywhere from 10 to 12 increase on the medical side. And so because of that, we've been able to roll dollars into salary increases. As we look forward and if we see changes in, in the cost, total cost because of COVID-19, we may be looking at adjusting our, the premiums uh, and, and the whole plan design. And that's actually what happens on an annual basis. Is that helpful? So uh, thank you, Dr. Medina and, and Nicole. Um, Trustee Anderson, I just have a quick clarification question for the board. So the item on the agenda says how much money? $80 million. $80 million. And that's for year one with year two yeah. and year three undetermined. 
and I think just uh, just so I think we can wrap this up and and I'll see if anybody if any other trustees have any question or anything. I, I think the issue here is some constructive feedback about transparency about what the total cost is for an item when it's being put on the agenda. I don't think anyone's not supporting this agenda item, but there's a real big difference between 80 million and um, 240 million dollars. And I think that's the only thing we're asking as trustees is that transparency about what that total amount is in the context of everything you all described uh, uh, very well. But I think that's that's a part of it. And I think I see Trustee Teich um, raising her hand, but I just wanna go back to Trustee Anderson. Do I have that correct about the, the transparency question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Trustee Teich. I think Trustee Anderson's concern is that as board members, trustees, we have a fiduciary responsibility to our taxpayers to make sure that we are looking at all of our contracts carefully. In my opinion, if we're being asked to approve a contract, then that means we have oversight. And if we have to come back each year to approve that contract, even though it's built into the budget, I think, you know, I, I see where, where Trustee Anderson is coming from. If some kind of mention about what the ultimate cost might be, 240 million plus, you know, I don't even know if we can estimate at this point, but going back to our fiduciary responsibility as trustees to the taxpayers, we need to have oversight of contracts. If we're being asked to sign a contract, then I think we should do it on a year by year basis because it's gonna come back, my understanding, to us at some point. So I would support Trustee Anderson's amendment. The contract is really only- Oh, we're hearing somebody. Yes, I'm sorry, Trustee um, Rodriguez. I, I did want to emphasize that when we list the dollar amount, what we're listing is the um, the approximate amount of expenditure. So I also want to emphasize that the $80 million is the combination of both what the employee contributes as well as what the district contributes. And so what we're saying is what we're reflecting in that agenda item is how much approximately our expenses have been. I will share with you that uh, four years ago, um, when I uh, came to uh, uh, Austin, I remember our expenses being upwards of $90 million. And so it, it, the way we were able to, you know, now it fluctuates from 80 to $90 million, but what really determines that is how we design the plan. And so it, it may mean that the district might need to contribute more, I apologize or with the design, the, the premiums may need to change at that point. I apologize, my dog has something different to say. <laughs> so the contract is not necessarily to say that it's an $80 million contract, it's to say that that's what approximately our expenditure has been. And we'll need to design the plan differently should we increase that cost. So in full transparency, I want to interrupt and say then that all of that needs to be in the backup material because the explanations, Dr. Medina, that you've given provide transparency. I don't recall that being in the backup material. It may be there. I mean, I've read a lot of material in the last two weeks. And so if it's if if it can be clearer in the backup material that this is an estimate, that you know, things may change. And please, um, this trustee has requested many, many times that backup material backup material be bulleted as much as possible and avoiding complete paragraphs all the time because it's really difficult to go through all that dense text. So those are my comments. Absolutely. And I think the board might benefit from kind of seeing on a year to year basis what those expenses have been. And I think that that would provide that transparency. And I would, I would welcome that opportunity to just give you an update on the yearly basis in terms of what, what those expenses have been. Absolutely. Okay. Trustees, any other comments? Trustee uh, Mathias. I just want to thank Dr. Medina. So I, I know that uh, some of our friends from Aetna will sometimes stop us at conferences as trustees. And when they hear that we're from the Austin ISD, they'll talk about the monies that they saved us. So what I'm hearing from you squares with what I've heard from them in terms of the savings accrued to our district through the use of their services. So I think that maybe in the future, that's simply something for repair. I think the trustees get a certain sticker shock by seeing big numbers like 80 million, not realizing that these numbers could be even bigger if we were not realizing the savings that we're currently uh, saving, that we're re currently realizing. Thank you. 
And President Rodriguez, you know, yeah. if, if Ann and I are the only ones that have a concern with that and the rest of the trustees are fine with it, again, my, my intent is not to inhibit multi-year pricing savings. Um, it's just simply to have, you know, trustee eyes on something of this magnitude and to at some point have, you know, some basis for some conversation and explanation. So I'm happy to withdraw if nobody else has an issue. I think one of the takeaways from this, um, and maybe I can see some thumbs up or, or hands up. I, I think that this has been a really good discussion about just having some more clarity and providing feedback to the administration about the kind of information that's helpful to us in making sure that we uh, have the information that we need and we support the contracts being moved forward. And I'm seeing a couple of heads um, shaking and, and some thumbs up and stuff. So I think um, Dr. Medina, Nicole, Dr. Dr. Cruz, if you would just take that feedback um, and I'm pretty sure that um, we'll continue to, to just see that as, as we go through our, our different uh, consent agenda items. I will certainly add that, Trustee Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, so having, uh, unless there's any other discussion, okay, so having a motion by, oh, I lost track. Trustee, Tyke. Trustee Tyke and I seconded. That's right, Trustee Tyke, having a motion by Trustee Tyke and a second by Trustee Anderson to approve agenda item 9.2 all those in favor, please raise your right hand. So the motion passes by all those on the dais. So next, um, can we have a uh, motion to approve agenda item 12.2? To move as amended. 12.2 and any second on item number 12.2? I, I have a question. Yep. Move as amended, it hasn't been amended yet. There we go. So it <laughs> seems to me that if I were to request one amendment, it would simply be the addition of two words and those two words would be at least before the words one minute. So currently the, there are two instances of one, if you do a quick uh, word, search on this document, the word, the word one is mentioned twice. The first time it is shall allot one minute. Uh, the second time it says no individual shall be given less than one minute. I have no issue with that. What I'm thinking is that if we were to, to change shall allot one minute to shall allot at least one, um, one minute, then that would be amenable to this trustee, especially knowing our tradition of giving folks two minutes to speak at public comment before we thought that we're going to have more public comment than we've actually gotten. So uh, Trustee Messiah, let me just go back for one second, just from a governance perspective. If I okay. could make sure and recognize you as having made a motion to approve item 12.2 and with a second from Trustee Anderson, and then now we're in discussions, and I think you you were talking about, the, uh, about an amendment to that. I'd wanna make sure, since you've kind of uh, laid out that amendment, I wanna make sure and give Trustee Ashey, uh, a little bit of time as the chair of policy to kind of uh, explain why, how it was, why this policy is the way it is, and then have a discussion about your particular uh, suggestion. Trustee Ashey. Certainly. Uh, thank you, President Rodriguez. So um, won't take up very much time. I just wanted to kind of lay a little bit of groundwork as per the policy committee's discussions around this particular policy. Um, I think the main thing that I want uh, to make sure everyone knows is that this policy, while it is on our agenda for right now, is intended not to fall off of our agenda, meaning we want to be able to approve what we have been doing si since September. And we also know that there are multiple trustees who are interested in increasing the allotted time. But there were a lot of questions about how we would implement that, what that would look like for administration, what that would look like for the officers running our meeting. And, and so before we made the changes to the policy to reflect that, we felt like it deserved and needed more time in the policy committee to get that particular piece right. So the intention was to bring this forward tonight because there had been also some people who had reached out saying that they wanted to go ahead and at least amend the policy to reflect what we have been doing since September. Um, and we can have then have the discussion at this point 
around uh, around that topic itself, but with the understanding that there was never an intention for this uh, policy to be as is, meaning it was my understanding as the as the board policy chair that we would continue to discuss this so that we could get this increased time allotment correct. Um, we, there had been discussion of increasing the time once we got to over 30 speakers. Um, how do we make sure that we're giving the same amount of time to general comment and agenda comment and uh, some of the, just some of the finer details that, that have been around this policy. Um, so to, to kind of address your point, Trustee Mathias, um, and there's a part of me that wants to say, is it Dr. Trustee Mathias or is it Trustee Dr. Mathias? I don't know. I don't know how I get that right. Um, but where I, what I wanted to do is just make sure that all of the trustees know that this particular policy is going to be on the policy committee's agenda for probably the next couple of months so that we can make sure we get that detail correct. And But as our current policy stands, it still says we're doing um, what's been in the policy since June, July, or how many ever months it was before that. So we just wanted it to reflect what we've been doing since September. Thanks. Great. So trustees, any other, oh yeah, sorry. I can see the hands raised. Oh, that was Chris, that was uh, Trustee Ashy. Any other comments? Uh, Trustee Mathias. Certainly happy to respond. So the, the, the question is, there's a certain tension in having the policy committee presented to us something that, was, that in the words of the chair was never intended as is, but then also asking for approval at the same time. So uh, it, I, I, I'm having great difficulty with this. Maybe it, I'm wondering if the, the chair would allow me to withdraw my motion so that someone else can make this motion. If this is to be forwarded, I'm just, I'm happy to, to continue to advocate. There, as, as two of our three speakers this evening noted, there's this perception that uh, we as a board are trying to limit public comment, which we know is not the case, but at the same time, perception is reality. I'm happy for us to do what we need to do to, to say at least one minute, but I am happy to encourage this board to continue its practice of two minutes of public comment on nights like this when we have only three speakers. Thank you. And, yes, and, and that was actually a, a big a big part of the discussion, uh, Trustee Mathias. There, you're not the only one. There's multiple of us that are, and certainly not wanting to limit public comment, but rather make sure that when we do implement it, we're implementing it well, and that we have all of the detail around how we would do that um, figured out. So um, I, I actually truly, truly do hear what you're saying too. I, I, I understand the, the uh, struggle, if you will, between why are we approving the policy when we know we're going to change it. And, and I think maybe I didn't communicate that very well. So I think it really was to at least reflect what has been in practice, what we have been doing since September um, and since the law was changed, which required this policy change. So um, that was really the only, and, and again, this is, that's why we wanted to bring it forward was to have this discussion so that people would understand that um, there are multiple trustees who are interested in trying to get this detail right but then all of these other pieces that were in there that we are already doing, let's get that in our policy. So that was where that was resting and where it came from. Thank you all. And, and just to clarify, Trustee Mathias, were you withdrawing the amendment or withdrawing your motion to approve the 12.2 the at all? Excellent question. So my motion was to approve it as amended. So if, if that's not amenable to the chair, then I'm happy to withdraw it and have someone else bring it forward as a motion. I'm seeing a hand from Trustee Ellens. Got it. And so what I might do is, um, Trustee Ashy, can I recognize you as making a motion to approve uh, item 12.2? Yes. After uh, Trustee Matthias has withdrawn his previous motion and then ask for a, a second to second. your motion, Trustee Ashy. And Trustee I think that's seconding it. Trustee Ty second. Okay, and then in addition, I have four trustees that um, want to make comments, and so I've got Trustee Ellens, Trustee Cindy Anderson, Trustee Teich, and Trustee Wagner. So, Trustee Ellens. Okay, so um, generally we try not to amend policies on the dais because there are some legal issues that we generally have to reflect or get approval for, but I'm kind of liking what. Uh, Trustee Matthias put out there because I still think what it does is it does reflect what we're doing. Um, it doesn't, it, it 
provides flexibility for the chair and even um, whoever's, I guess, uh, trying to work through the administration to, to be thinking about ways that we could possibly um, find time to add without providing limitations that legal or um, the administration would struggle with on the dais. So um, I guess I might ask if, if people agree with that. I, I kind of, um, I like that approach, I think because of the flexibility and it also doesn't seem to cross into the legal restrictions, but um, I'll, I just wanted to uh, give my support to, to that direction. Got it, thank you. Um, we have trustee Cindy Anderson and then trustee Taish and then trustee uh, Yasmin Wagner and then trustee Singh. So trust, uh, trustee Anderson. Um, I, I, I sort of like the compromise as well from trustee Matthias. I will tell you that the reason why we didn't lead with that was because we felt that if we said at least one minute that we needed to then give um, additional specification to the community as under what circumstances it would be greater. And we weren't able to do that at this point. So that, that's my only sort of nervousness about that. But I do like, you know, I, I think for me, the intent was always, let's at least approve what we're doing now. And then let's take the next several months and let's look at different ways to increase opportunities without pigeonholing ourselves into it via current policies that we have to continue to amend it and amend it. But kind of like we did in the beginning, um, after the, the legislation um, approved this bill was we, we tried some different things before we landed on what then became kind of a several month running common practice. So I, I'm okay either way, but I do think that if we approve it with that amendment, we need to make it clear to the public that we do need some flexibility over the next several months to figure out under what circumstances, and that may change from month to month as we learn things, as we have um, more public comment and go back to regular meetings and so forth and so on. And actually given the situation when with COVID-19, it may take a great deal longer than that. We may be well into the fall before we land on um, when we can provide some greater specificity around under what circumstances that would change. Because I think that's one of the things too that um, doesn't just involve the presiding officer, um, but also the administration in terms of volume. And so we, we need to make sure that as we're kind of piloting things, that there's capacity on both sides to make it work really well um, and for the community to feel like they're heard. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Trustee Teich. I'm comfortable with entertaining the, the amendment, although I agree that um, when we start wordsmithing on the dais, um, we run into problems and we're, we're already much longer in discussion on this than I think was allotted. Uh, that said, I would, I would appreciate hearing from the public at ANNTEICH at austin.rr.com or text me at 512-797-7724, particularly the, the two um, uh, speakers, Jared Brackenridge and Dusty Harshman. I, want to, I would like to know why you need more than one minute. Number two, do you prepare your remarks ahead of time? Number three, um, is there an understanding that you can engage with me, with this trustee, anytime you want to, given my schedule? Um, you're welcome to, to come and talk to me because we can't do back and forth for public comment. And then number four, is it because it's on television that it's uh, so important that you be able to air these comments on television? Is that the overriding concern? So I'd appreciate that kind of dialogue, which we can't have on the dais when we do public comment. So a n n t e i c h at austin dot r r excuse me dot r r dot com five one two seven nine seven 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 two four. Please text me, Mr. Breckenridge and Mr. Harshman, and let me know specifically why the one minute is restrictive and why um, we should have more time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Wagner. Um, I just wanted to comment a little bit on the amendment. I I have a little bit of concern with the policy as it's been proposed without the amendment. The amendment though, however, I think makes it a little bit challenging, I think for our constituents to understand um, and have clear expectations on what they will be permitted in terms of time or, or and when. And so that kind of squishiness, I think we're from a policy standpoint, it makes things a little easier, but I think it makes it harder 
for constituents. What I would instead feel more comfortable with is snapping back to our two minute um, time period that we used to have. Um, I don't think we have seen, um, even on our busiest of nights, the crush of um, additional comment that I think we had all anticipated, um, specifically since we're limiting public comment to um, items for board action. So from that standpoint, my comfort I think would be to go ahead and just change it to two minutes for now, um, or up to two minutes, um, if that is something that, I don't know, but the, the, the at least one minute, I think, leaves things in a place where I think it's going to be hard for people to plan their comments. Thank you, Trustee Wagner. Uh, and then Trustee Singh. Um, so I really appreciate the policy committee and the thoughtfulness with which they have um, put this together. Um, I th and one of the things that I did bring to the policy committee was um, proposing a two minute um, time limit um, up to 30 speakers. And then if we had more, we kind of go beyond that. But I don't think we wanna go into, I'm sensing we don't wanna go into that level of editing right now. So I would, I would favor um, Trustee Mathias's um, either either one. I like what Trustee Mathias had. I also like what Trustee Wagner ha said, but I think either of those um, for me would be preferable probably than what um, is currently pro being proposed. Uh, let's see if I have anyone. I don't think I have anybody else. I have a question for Trustee Ashy as the chair of the policy committee. Um, I think that you're if I could just sum up some of the comments, I think you're hearing that the board wants to have more of a discussion about the potential of how we might potentially add some more minutes. Um, I don't know that we should be doing it from the dais right now, but I, I would defer to you on whether you would like to, us to consider your motion of the policy as, as stated or whether you feel comfortable with us doing something on the dais right now. I, I think I think we have pretty good general direction from the board about what, what we need to do next. I think the only question I have is whether or not right now is the appropriate time to, to try to wordsmith or whether we should pass this policy. And then obviously you all have some pretty strong direction from the board about what to do next. So my recommendation would be actually that we pull the policy from a vote um, until we can get back into the policy committee and bring the two minutes and figure that out and get all of that in uh, with great detail and explanation for both trustees and for the public. Um, because even in the conversation, I heard some people say at least one minute and then some people said, well, let's just do all two minutes. I mean, there was even still some discussion in there and some difference of opinion um, even at that point. So um, I think what I wanna do too is, is also take into consideration administration and some of the challenges that they have faced mm -hmm. um, as far as, as public comment and, and the, the new law that was passed in September. So um, it, at this point, what I would say, rather than trying to wordsmith it from the, from the uh, Zoom dais, uh, that we pull it from vote for total and just bring it back to the policy committee. Okay, we'll, we'll keep it on our list of uh, items for the governance committee. Thank you very much, uh, Trustee Ashy. So the motion has been pulled. Um, I'm going to move to the items for separate vote. Um, Secretary Ellens, do you have a motion to approve agenda item 13.1? I make a motion to approve agenda item 13.1. Is there a second? Everybody's on mute. <laughs> I know. Uh, second, I know. Trustee Tice. Second. Yeah, I'm getting Trust. used to toggling back and forth. You know, I'm 67. Trustee. It's a real challenge for this brain. Trustee Tice makes a second. Uh, is there any discussion on item 13.1? And if there is none, having a motion by Secretary Ellens and a second by Trustee Tice to approve agenda item 13.1, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Sorry, um, all those opposed, all those abstaining. 
Okay, so the motion passes. Question. Was it seconded by Tice or? Uh, yeah, yes, uh -huh. yes, Trustee Tice. And the motion passes uh, seven, four, zero against, and please show Trustee Wagner uh, abstaining. Uh, Secretary Ellens, do you have a motion to approve agenda item uh, 13.2? This one's longer. So I move that the Austin Independent School District authorize the use of the power of eminent domain to acquire a fee simple interest in 4.366 acres of land owned in part by the city of Austin, Texas and located at 2608 Rich Creek, Austin, Travis County, Texas 78757 and being a portion of a 5.1 acre tract of land described in a deed to the city of Austin, recorded in volume 5274, page 2355, deed records of Travis County, Texas, for the modernization, construction, and expansion of the Rosedale School. My motion includes approval of the proposed resolution. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Teich. Okay. Is there any discussion? And I want to apologize, um, Trustee Mathias, you had your hand up on the system, and I wasn't sure whether you had a comment or discussion as we learned this new technology. Excellent question. So I, I did have a comment on 12.2, but we've gone beyond that. So maybe I can share that with officers afterward. I, there's no reason for us to, to limit public comment to one minute on a night like this, but I can follow up offline with the officers since we've Absolutely. Moved. There we go. Okay. Thank you, absolutely. So uh, going back to the, to the motion on 13.2, uh, uh, is there any discussion on this item? I, I'm learning to look at y'all's faces and then look whether the hands are raised as well. So um, having a motion by Secretary Ellens and a second by Trustee Teich to approve agenda item 13.2, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, all those abstaining. So please show the motion passing seven, four, zero against and show trustee Wagner as abstaining. Thank you all very much. Um, we will now recess the open meeting at 719 PM and move to executive session. For purposes of this video meeting, the board will now leave this open meeting, which will remain live online and convene privately in a separate video meeting. When we are finished with our executive session, we will reconvene here. And again, we thank you for your patience uh, in doing a virtual board meeting. Good evening. Uh, we will now reconvene the open meeting at 10.56 p.m. Secretary Ellens, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. A second. Trustee Ty seconds. Having a motion by Trustee Ellens and a second by Trustee Teich to adjourn. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion passes by all those on the dais and the meeting is now adjourned at 10.56 uh, p.m.